Welcome back to part two, Talking Sheffield Live, Talking Sport on a Thursday evening here. And we have Derek Geary uh, for the second half as well as the first. Sheffield United's under 18s coach and one of, we reckon, about 30 players in the modern era to play for both the Owls yeah. and the Blades. Where James Gregg joins us, rounding up everything else. We did rack to 20, 26 or 27, didn't we? But yeah. peppered, peppered with people saying, you've Yeah, forgotten oh, him. you've forgotten him, forgotten him. And yeah. Then, oh, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. I did, yeah. So. <laughs> Who were the other ones that came up? Wilf Rostrum was one of them. Um, that, uh, I think players who probably list. played before I was born, actually. Definitely. Honest, but yeah. Yeah, you're, <laughs> so you I are, can't really comment. I can't disagree either way. But you're honest, you're but. exempt from blame, yeah, without a doubt. A bit, yeah, yeah. But so that we've got time for it, and we did promise this, uh, the only goal, and you played, what, 200 and odd plus games in your career, and you only scored one goal. Yeah. Shame on you. Shame uh -huh. on you. Uh -huh. However, <laughs> it was, and I've seen it on YouTube, and you can catch it on YouTube, it was a bit special. Um, it was uh, for Sheffield United at Millwall in 2004, the winner in a 2-1 win. Was that the game where Paddy Kenny got sent off at half-time? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a bit of a crazy game, really. Yeah. I think uh, Jags, Jager, Phil Jagielka went and goal. I think Paddy got sent off having a fight with him. Um, Kevin Muscat, I think, in the <laughs> yeah. tunnel, and it was, it was on, um, it was, uh, the manager was doing a documentary at the time. Yeah, so I've seen it on there, All yeah. season long, there's a camera in the dressing room, so the cameraman must have been thinking, this is gold, this is, because yeah. even now, uh, some of the young lads or people say, oh, I've seen that documentary, uh, there's a lot of swearing, a lot of this going <laughs> on, but the odds, I'll mention me goal, I will say, that was the only goal I've ever You timed seen. it well. If you're going to score, do it on a TV yeah, documentary. Do it on a TV documentary. Do it from 20 or 25 yards. <laughs> tell us about, tell us a bit more about it. Go on. <laughs> Glory in the moment. It was actually just a crazy game. I think we were, it was nearly all at half time. Obviously, Paddy got sent off. Jags went in goal and we went 1 0 down, I think. And then I think Andy Little scored a free kick. And then the ball just came to me at the edge of the box. And to be honest with you, I just struck it. <laughs> Eyes closed. I'd probably clear my lines more than Buddy on the <laughs> shot. Yeah, but yeah, it was, it was nice to nestle into the back of the net. Come on, it was a spectacular right foot volley <laughs> from about 22 yards, arrowed into the bottom corner. Yeah. That's how I would have described oh, it. Oh, yeah. That's, that's been generous. That's being yeah. sort of modest as well, I think. So, would you t would you swap that one screamer to win the game for United? It was you know obviously much talked about. People remember it. Or ten sort of knob ends in the 90th minute. I don't know. <laughs> that's a good it question. Depends if it's to win the game or not. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was, it was definitely a special moment. Plus, it was only new to Sheffield United as well. Yeah. And as I said, I was um, obviously trying to cement my place in the team, yeah. and um, we, we had a good squad, and I was trying to get news to the club. So it was, it was a good. Good goal and a good chance uh, probably to win a lot of people over. And Going Neil Wardock's so reaction to it is fantastic as well, isn't it? Have you seen, have you seen the yeah. thing? Uh, you, come on, come on. Yeah. Yeah. It was just a crazy game, to be honest. The whole game was just a blow. It was just like, uh, it's like any game you play at Millwall and the den, it's hostile and it's I crazy. Do, I don't want to burst your bu bubble, but that was, as you say, early on for United. You went on to play for them for six more years and didn't score another goal. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think I do remember missing an open goal against Charlton at home. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, from a cross, I don't know who crossed it. It was literally an open goal, was it? and I missed it. And only for Keith Gillespie scored in the last minute to win it, I think the manager would have nearly <laughs> kicked me out of the dressing room. Was that at Bramall Lane? It was at Bramall Lane. I yeah. think Keith Gillespie scored a volley right at the end. Yeah. Um, I think we won that was a good goal one. as well, wasn't it? Yeah, Gillespie goal. Yeah. And just before that, I missed an absolute open goal, and yeah. Stuart McCall, who was assistant at the time, I knew he was going to come for me. He goes, everyone's telling me, he goes, what about him missing that open goal? Yeah. And <laughs> And I just went that on off. Gillespie got me a bit of a hole there. <laughs> right, we're going to come back uh, to, to, to Dell, um, talking about the Blades prospects for the Wimbledon game. Any thoughts he has on Tuesday night, which wasn't the best. I know you were there and yeah, I was yeah. there. And our, our thoughts on that. Well, we have to put that into context. Really do have to put that into context, don't yeah, we? Yeah, definitely. Uh, and, and what else is going on? Well, what to else? be fair, there's no Blades or Owls uh, this no. weekend. But So both sides sort of will be mulling over, I think, those two losses that... that sort of go into this sort of mini break with, um, in essence. So, uh, Owls in action on Tuesday night, of course, but no games this weekend. So, because of that, why don't you visit some of our non-league sides that are in action. Fortunately, Halmer away at Rossington, Maine. 
uh, coming off a good win on Tuesday night in the League Cup. Um, and Sheffield, they're away at Newcastle Town. Uh, that's the one near Stoke, not the one up north. Uh, but what about Stocksbridge? They're home to Romulus. I know we don't usually mention them on this programme, but get up there, go and watch a good game of football. If you need your weekly football fix, it's a good place to go and watch some good quality football. Or Dronfield Town as yes. well. I know Alan yes. mentioned them on Twitter. Um, they're at home as well. But if it's not football, what else? Well, <laughs> you know what? There's so much going on. But uh, Sheffield Rugby Club, they're away as well. Big game for them, though. They play against Nuneaton. Could decide the league uh, that game because they're first and second um, running away with it really so if Sheffield can win that game it could also um, you know ultimately decide who wins the National 3 North in National 2 though uh, Sheffield Tigers well 11 straight defeats now um, and at the weekend when you wanted to stop the rot you want an easy game don't you in any yeah. sport they travel to yeah. second place Sale who are unbeaten in 11 so uh, probably the wrong place to be going um, at the weekend for the Sheffield Tigers uh, Sheffield Sharks basketball refreshed after a week off uh, providing some superb Friday night entertainment as always at the English Institute of Sport uh, against the Manchester Giants. It's 7.30 tip-off. Uh, big game. They're looking to do a big late-season charge to try and defend that playoff title that they won um, last year. Uh, well, the Sheffield Hatters, the uh, women's basketball team, defended their women's BBL trophy title. They cruised to a winner, uh, winning uh, opening game in their uh, group stages against the Nottingham Wildcats. Uh, the Sheffield Steelers, they've closed that gap at the top of the league between them and the Cardiff Devils. Devils. Devils have beaten them six times this season, but they're only three points behind them in the league. There's a team between them, the Belfast Giants, and that's who uh, come to the arena twice this weekend. So on Saturday, seven, uh, seven o'clock tip-off, and uh, five o'clock on Sunday. Both massive games. Sheffield win those, their second, and hopefully overtake uh, the, the Devils as well. Um, results have got to go their way. Uh, Sheffield Eagles, they've made their eighth signing of the season. Bodes well ahead of their championship campaign. Lucky, obviously, still to even have a side in Sheffield after that financial scare towards the end of the summer. They've got a pre-season friendly, by the way, at Bellevue against Wakefield. Um, that's three o'clock on Sunday. So some early season rugby league, that's the play to go and finally we'll finish off with uh, Joe Root as well he's played a big part in England's T20 victory over India this afternoon um, it's the only game on that tour that he's not scored over 50 so letting the side down there but he, it's not really because yeah. he scored 46 not out so pretty yeah. good it's, yeah not bad yeah, not Let's bad. Just say not bad. <laughs> Thank you for that. There's plenty going on. Plenty so going on, yeah. You don't have to have football, so plenty, plenty going on. Exactly. So what are you going to do this, this weekend? What have you got in mind? We have um, a top-of-the-table clash with right. the team uh, against Nottingham Forest away, so... Have you? Yeah, oh. we get preparation for that tomorrow morning. And Excellent. It's a big game. We've only got sort of like 10 or 11 games left, so... A good chance, and the lads have been going really well in the leagues. To be fair to them, so how, how big a store do you place on the results at that level? Uh, they've got to learn to win, but at the oh, same yeah. time, you're looking yeah, you got you got to look at the development. So ultimately, we could be a mid mid table or bottom of the table, but produce two or three players that yeah. the manager yeah. wants, and you got to be mindful of that. So what if, what I try to do is I, I, I am. You want to give them that winning mentality, and it's important yeah. to get that because when they go into that first team building, that's what results yeah. it will be dependent on but um then you got to think hang on a minute so there'll be some games where play, we might win four nil but i don't think a player probably played as well as when we lost four nil so yeah. i'll probably be over critical against him i help them with his game how we can do better and then if you we, we win we lose a game four nil i could see you've done brilliant jesse so you look mm -hmm. at the individual and then i'll tell you i like to talk to them as a team then so i sort of do two different brackets really yeah. look at the individual then look at the team how did they manage the game and then ultimately did they find the result they needed what about the thing that we were talking about beforehand about the way that you you treat these kids now the guidelines that are in place and how that differs from the way that maybe you were treated as an apprentice yeah. yourself like how so. different are times now it's, yeah it's definitely different as we were talking earlier on young lads are full of their ipads and phones and all and you, as much as i could sit here and say oh don't they shouldn't do it, but it's, it's the times we're in, so I don't want to take that away from them. But it's definitely different from we were, obviously. Uh, when I was obviously uh, in the U team, where we were in cleaning dressing rooms, we're scrubbing, and I still try to drift feed a bit of that into it sometimes. If um, I feel they haven't cleaned the dressing rooms they're in, I'll get them in the next morning at 7 o'clock. How does that go down? To be fair, they're all brilliant, they're good lads, they understand. Yeah. I think the most important thing is. At the start, when you first go in, you set the standards and the boundaries, you let them know this is if they drop underneath that, certain things need to be done. And 
every time they do drop on the knee, you get on them and they do it. And they're all good lads, they're all prefer chill, fairly spot on. And usually they don't actually have to be in cleaning the place, because usually they obviously do it. And just little things really, like cleaning tables or doing little stuff like that. It's just there. Uh, it's important really, because mm. if you you got to find a certain discipline off the field to have that sort of discipline on the you field. You can't allow anybody to think they've made it at uh, 16 or no, 17. No, that's right? definitely it, yeah. So yeah. I, was, I tend to nip them down on that one as well. Yeah. If, they, if they just get a bit hype, in general, they're mostly good lads and they do work really hard, to be fair. Mm. Some of the good, some of the players that you've had, you mentioned Regan Slater off air to us as well, and some yeah. of the, you know, so how do you go about that? You know, when there's someone like that who's played in the first team, scored a goal, and then next thing they're playing in the Eve team, back, you know, they come back in with the other lads. Yeah. Obviously, it all depends on the character, but how do you go about that? Do you treat them like a star man, or do you sort of treat them? Hey, you know, you're one of the lads again now, you're back in the United Yeah, I'll probably, <laughs> I'll probably nip them back, back down. I'll probably use my career against them as well, say, oh, you've only played one game. <laughs> yeah. You've done absolutely nothing in the game yeah. yet. It's, 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 you've got a long way to go. But it has a said in general, there's no lads that get a bit above their stations. Oh. I think, obviously, Regan's played. I think um, Callum Semple's been on the bench yeah. a few times. But they're all good lads. They're willing to work. I think they get a realisation of what they need to do. There's no one above their stations. and. If they do, I'll just nip them straight back down and anyway. This is not just Sheffield United, it applies everywhere to every academy coach of any age that you speak mm. to. The lack of leaders, talkers in the game compared to, say, your day. I mean, just one or two of the characters you played with, I mean, you can name a few, eh? Yeah. Outgoing, exuberant, <laughs> extrovert characters, yeah? yeah? Who were the biggest? I could go through a whole load here, especially from my Wednesday days. I think I was a young kid playing in the fourth team, a left back, and I had Des Walker to the side. And they were thinking, here's an England a legend, he's going to help me with my game. He no. absolutely nailed me, everybody. Did, did he? Did and he? at the time, I'm thinking, he's, he's killing me here. I'm a young lad, I'm trying to get me on, mate. He's not helping me. But I look back and just think he was brilliant. For right. someone, I'd learned so much off him, his mindset, and he played in World Cups. He's England national, a legend of the game, and he was just a bomb winner. Yeah. And it didn't really matter if you're 18 or 17 in an Air Force team, you, I don't care, you could be 29, right. you're, we're here to win and we're here to do a job. And I look back now and I think it was a great learning experience playing against the likes of him and yeah, I think John Newsom was good to me John there. John Newsom is yeah. a regular friend yeah, of the yeah, show. Yeah. And uh, to Bramall Lane, I mean you can go through any number from Paddy Kenny to uh, Chris Morgan. That's uh, it, yeah. And obviously right. I, was a, I was a bit older then so but I was able to handle it. <laughs> True me experience. But you obviously you got, you got the likes of Paddy Moggs, um, Alan Cosley. Uh, was because uh, yeah. he was a fun man around the dressing room and that and everyone was just sort of different. Even Tongi he was quiet. Everyone Monty. Mm. Um, it was lucky for me as there were young lads coming up with Sheffield United and I was at Wednesday, so we knew each other and anyway. Yeah. They were, so but you haven't got that friends. now, have you? I mean every you know, players are perhaps quieter, not as many leaders. What do you think? Yeah, I think I do definitely get where you're coming from. I think the interaction through social media, like if, if someone could sit there on the phone and talk to about 50 different people without yeah. opening their mouth, just by going like that on the phone without having to get up and leave the house and interact with people. It's definitely changing from when we were younger, but it is how society is now and it's how, not just football, but yeah. um, it's, it is interesting. It's, it's interesting for me because I probably do come from an era where you do go out and you talk and you interact with people, but mm. it, it's just um, it's a, it's a challenge for me to actually manage it. To be fair, yeah. Mm. Sorry, no. I was going to say, I was gonna say. So, in terms of dealing with the first team, you know, that sort of crossover from between youth and first team. How often do you interact with Chris Wilder? Let's say someone's had a great game on a Saturday. I know there's other people that will probably have a bit of input as well. Yeah. But how you know how much of a say would you have to Chris in saying, hey, this lad's doing brilliant. He's scored 25 goals. He's you know banging him in. You want to. You know, I'd have a look at him. Yeah. I would what do, yeah. It's important, obviously. You look at the manager on the first team, the job he's got, he's, he's fully focused on getting the team promoted. So <laughs> it's important that if he comes and asks, and he does call me, watches you team games, he's well aware of the good young players in the, in the system and all that. And if he comes, you ask the question, you tell him, well, I think this and like that. But ultimately, we sort of let them make their own decision. If we bring them to the shop window and they, they see enough of them to judge their own opinion, he will say, and Alan will say, they'll talk about players, and obviously Mitch will, yeah. will have his input and will. Paul Mitchell great. was in last week, yeah. yeah. Brilliant, entertaining guest, fantastic. Yeah. And he's a well respected man. Yeah. Of course, yeah. So right. they know the game and they'll talk, and if they want to know more about the player, they'll ask. Do you try and mirror the first team in the way that you play? Uh, I know that Chris, you know, there were people wrongly who thought, oh, this is going to be a long ball, 
Route mm. 1, so it's far, far from mm. it, but playing really good football uh, and looking to get it on the deck and zip it around quickly. I know it's been 3-5-2, but it could easily be 4-4-2, you know. Mm. But do you try to scale it down under 18s to play a similar way or, or we what? We definitely drift it in like a Mark yeah. 23 level, I think. Um, Travis Binion and uh, John Dunmore to Mick yeah. Wadsworth who are there, they probably cement more of a forced team formation in. I, through my own experiences, just give them sort of an input of what it's going to be like when you're actually there, but more or less formation yeah. wise, and I try and more or less stick to how the manager sometimes plays and then sometimes how we play and sometimes, because it's part of their development, they need certain different formations or certain different situations for yes, their own learn. personal development and then they go into the 23s and they start mirroring more what the manager does, but you, you, then I've got to be mindful of as well because you've got young lads who could go from me into the first team, so they've got to be prepared yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. James Colliver, by the way, I forgot to mention at the break, uh, Sheffield FC <laughs> manager, James. Best bit of uh, uh, spraying that Derek's going to get here, isn't it? Uh, he sent me a tweet saying, I hope you've got his booster seat for part two. <laughs> <laughs> Gas. <laughs> They're all right, they're yeah. all right, these, aren't they? They're all right, these. Yeah, yeah Jas right. is the, um, my girlfriend and Jas's girlfriend are twin sisters, so... Oh, really? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, OK. OK. Yeah. It's amazing how everybody knows each other and what, whatever, and all the connections in say, uh, Sheffield. You played in the Premier League, yeah. so that's, you know, big... I mean, it's the pinnacle, really, isn't it? It's yeah. amazing, really, and sometimes you probably have to pinch yourself a bit and think, wow, that was great. Who was the best player you've come up against? No, not just in the Premier League, but, you know, Championship days and stuff as well. Sort of bombing up the left hand side, you know, whatever. Yeah, um, I, I think obviously we played against Man United, so obviously Ronaldo was yeah, the, the right. most best, the right. best player in the world at the time, yeah. so he was yeah. obviously a big challenge. And, and I man marked him for a couple of games, which was obviously <laughs> definitely an experience. Yeah. And then uh, I think the one who gave me the most problems are, was uh, Robin at Chelsea at the time. Yeah. Oh, right, okay, yeah. 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 Especially Stamford Bridge when we played them, he was uh, he just, he was a different level. and. Uh, it was really difficult to mark against. Did, you, did you ever pinch yourself that you were on the same pitch as some, some of these guys? I know you were entitled to be Premier League player yourself. Yeah, you do you ever think, what am I doing here? Of course you do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it's every young kid's dream to play in the Premier League and mm. when you get there, and especially only a few years before, I was in League One with um, yeah, correct, yeah. Sheffield yeah. Wednesday and Stockport. And I knew if I got to Wednesday, you know by the way Neil was going and the team that he had that was really going to strive down. I knew if I got to, once I went to Sheffield United, I've got a real chance of getting in with, with Sheffield United. And uh, the challenge was then to get a game because Neil was obviously going to bring in new players. And I think yeah. he, he sort of hinted to me at the end of that season, he's saying, well, maybe next year you might have to go on loan. So but that, that was perfect, really, for me, for him to say that. I know it doesn't yeah. sound it because yeah. I just went back in the summer and walked doubly hard and made sure... Yeah. I started playing against Liverpool at the start of the season, so my goal was to start that game. And it was sad that you had to pack in when you did. I mean, you were only 27 or something, yeah. and, and the injury. You should have been at your peak. I mean, that's really tragic when you look at it, um, that you were robbed of your, your best years, potentially. Yeah, I, I was really right. starting to play well. Obviously, I had the year in the Premier League. I signed a new uh, four-year deal the following summer. Brian Robson came in. I felt as fit and as good as I've ever been. I was really enjoying my football. I loved playing for Sheffield United, and then... Uh, I think it was against West Brom at home we played in there. Mm. I felt a twinge in my knee that I never felt before, and I had something like 10 operations before that. I got the operation, and uh, he says, you might not come back from this one. This might be a struggle. And I yeah. did come back, and I played games here and there, scattered, but I was never really... The most disappointing thing was, is the most frustrating thing is, like any player, when you reach your peak and yeah. you're not that player anymore, it, it, it actually frustrates you, and you're, you're just thinking, this is not me. I'm getting done by wingers that are... I usually yeah. wouldn't get done by, and I think that was the most frustrating thing. And in the end, when I did retire, it was actually a relief not to have pain in my knee anymore. Yeah. That was the you got to look to your later life as well. Mm. I mean, you talked about some of the great uh, players that you were on the same field as and, and that you marked. I know that you mentioned one or two coaches and managers in, in part one that have been a positive influence, and there are some others. I know, for instance, that you got on very well with Brian Robson. Yeah. Fleeting though it was in his time at uh, yeah. Sheffield United. Brian came in um, thought he was really good, a real good man manager with the players and all. And me going through a rough time at my knee at the time, he was great managing at that and he was a real good guy. But as you said, he didn't last long, Alan. He, um, I think, I don't really think, the ma whatever happened, to somehow the fans didn't take to him and how he wanted to play or how he was as a person. I don't know, it was a the man you connection, but never really clicked for him there and he didn't really last long. But he was a good man, a good manager. And, 
right. enjoyed playing on them. There's some others as well that you wanted to, to, to mention. Um, yeah, at the minute, I'm, um, obviously coaching, the coaching yeah. side of things, um, I'm new to it and all, and you've got, you got um, the Academy of Sheffield United, you've got uh, Travis Binion and John Dunmore and mm. Mick Wadsworth, they've got real experiences in the game and it helped me along brilliantly with the coach, and you've got Jamie Anderson, the goalkeeping coach there, and I've done a couple of years at Hillsborough College as well, a year at Hillsborough College with uh, United Futures programme, yeah. which was brilliant for me, it was a real learning curve for me, but leads yeah. on down there. Okay. The only, uh, only other question, because we ask every guest, does Sheffield Wednesday can assign Jordan Rhodes? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I mean, I'm asked about it all the time on, on, on Twitter, and I'm convinced that they're making a very big play as far as they can go to, to, to get this player. It's never gone away. It's still there. There's still a determined attempt. Mm. And I'll tell you what, if I was a betting man, and I'm not, would I put something on it? I would. I, my instinct is that at this moment, I think he will come to Sheffield Wednesday. How about that? And if I'm wrong, I can tell Bell's face here. He's going, yeah, oh, right. I'm more interested in United. <laughs> no, he's only interested in. United. And I'll tell you what. If I'm wrong, I'll come on here next week and humbly apologise. I think. I think. Totally I, you wrong. know, that's an instinct. On, on that, you know, from a from a completely you know outside point of view, looking at it, it makes sense. He's not getting any games at Middlesbrough. No, he wants to come to Wednesday, but Co all the correct, yeah, you know, and his and his, his dad's yeah. at Wednesday, and you, you know, he's come. He's proven goal scorer at yeah. the championship. Yeah, get in, score some goals. All right, we've done it. We've done it. We've done it. We've done it. Were you were you at the lane on Tuesday? Were you at the lane on Tuesday? The, I didn't the actually. Defeat? I missed it. Actually, it was, Ben's uh, gone on the floor. Don't I was actually. coaching at the academy at the time. So right. it was a good miss, I'll tell you. Yeah. It was a very very good I've miss. I've been at most games. I was at Gillingham on Saturday. Yeah. Um, actually, went with Alan and Stephen Quinn to that one. Um, it's just one of those things. At some stage of the season, they've done so well. Blips do happen, just how you react from it, really. And most good, yeah. when we got promoted a uh, year, we lost two or three games on the trot. But the most important thing is bouncing back quickly, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. you'd rather have a dip now, wouldn't you? You know, that, Gosh, like yeah. you say, you know, that I remember that promotion season, and it was like, oh, yeah. And you grumble at the moment, you've only got because fans are impatient. You've got a week till the next game. In this case, you've got two weeks till the next game. Is that going to be a good thing in this case? Because one or two things have gone wrong there. There's a lot of food for thought. There's two new players in the building to integrate in the squad. Yeah. So for once, is that break of, what, ten days or more a good, good thing? It probably is, yeah. It's a good chance yeah. to get them all together, get them trained. And yeah. obviously you've got new lads in and then integrate them into how you want to play, your philosophy and all that. But they'll be fine. It's just a matter. Look, they're at the biggest club in League One and they're at a demanding club. But no matter what happens... Yeah. Even if you're in the Premier League and you're losing, they'll let you know about it, which is the yeah. best thing about it. It puts pressure on you, and it's yeah. rightly so. It's a, it's a massive club, and it's got massive expectations. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. I don't want to get clapped off when I'm losing yeah. the game. Or no. you, you, oh, you do, we've obviously you put it in, and you, you do your best, and you should have won a game. But as long as you give it your all, there's expectations there to get promoted. And, that's good, and it'll still be the same next year, and it'll be the same if it wins to get finally back into the Premier League. Just briefly, thoughts on James Hansen and Jay O'Shea, the two new yeah, players? Yes, obviously, it's yeah. enhancing the squad, obviously, and we hopefully get more goals in us in that sense. And um, the two, the most important thing at this level is the bigger the squad, the bigger squad usually gets promoted, really. So yeah. um, I feel like uh, if they can enhance, you get a couple of injuries, which I know the manager did before Christmas, and he mm. was thinking where strikers going to come from. We get another one in. It's like us when we got promoted. We had big strikers in there. We had good players. We had big squad. And even more so under Brian Robson and Kevin Blackwell. We had a massive squad. And they're the squads that get you promoted. OK, well, let's hope you're right. And uh, I, again, if I was a betting man, I think you will be. Uh, I'm, I've been very confident, but I hope that hasn't put the, the jinx on Sheffield United. I uh, see no reason yeah. why... Uh, save that clip, go. lads, behind there. I oh, know. There's one or two <laughs> clips might be saved tonight. Uh, James, thanks very much indeed. Uh, thank you to you, Derek, for a cheers, fantastic, yeah, cheers, enter cheers, entertaining cheers, hour. We didn't need subtitles. We understood every word. <laughs> uh, it's repeated at 11. If you missed, it will be on my YouTube channel this evening. Thanks for your company. See you next week. Bye. Bye.